Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab, and today we're going to discuss about SDLC questions part two. Uh, in my previous video, I have covered some questions, and in, in this video also, I'm going to cover some SDLC questions. So it definitely will be useful for you. If you still not subscribed to my channel, do subscribe to my channel and uh, click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on similar SDLC questions. Because these questions are very important for your CISSP, CCSP, ISSAP, CSSLP exam. My name is Prab Nair and for more information, you can refer my uh, LinkedIn profile. Okay, so without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Okay, so first question, first coffee shot. In which stage of SDLC? conduct the risk assessment and use the result to supplement the baseline security control question if we're talking about till risk assessment i will definitely go with the initiation but now they're talking about use the result to supplement the baseline security control that basically changed my thought process so d definitely remove because this is something where we're withdrawing the application operation and maintenance is basically come into the picture when we implement it Initiation only do risk assessment, but control implementation come in the development and acquisition. That's why the answer is A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Uh, one more important pointer before moving to the next coffee shot is, again, I'm telling you the question talking about the result to supplement the baseline security control. Okay, and development slash acquisition is basically differences in acquiring where you acquiring application from the vendor or during a development we develop in-house so in the in in this nist development is basically includes your designing so in the design phase we documenting a control okay in the initiation we identifying but here they're talking about result to supplement the controls that is why we basically went with the answer a okay so let's move to the next coffee shop okay in which stage of sdlc we do functional Mm -hmm. functional and security testing and prepare initial document for system certification accreditation see when you're talking about certification technical evaluation of a product is certification and management acceptance of the product is accreditation question is not document in which stage they obtain the question talking about in which stage we conducting a testing and preparing a documents so d definitely removed initiation is basically removed so we left with a and c C is basically when we already obtain the accreditation, the application used in a production. So when we onboarding any vendor or from the vendor, we basically procuring, we basically create a checklist and all that. We prepare a document, check parameters and everything. Okay. And if I'm acquiring any product from the vendor, we do the security testing of the vendor. Okay. Then we prepare the certification document to onboard the vendor. That is why I'm going with the answer A for alpha. Okay, question talking about prepare, not completed. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. In which stage of the SDLC system accreditation activities were completed? Now in this stage, the document completed. So development acquisition is basically where we preparing. Initiation we reviewing. Operation maintenance will be come into the picture after approval. When the application roll out to the production, the only option which is very close is implementation assessment. That is why the answer is D. It is a stage where we obtain the accreditation. It is a stage where we're doing a migration to the production. Okay. So let's move to the next coffee shot. It's a, it's a bit tricky question. Question talking about in which stage of the SDLC we conduct an operational readiness review and manage the configuration of the system. The question talking about in which stage of the SDLC we conduct an operational readiness review and manage the configuration of the system. So option A, development slash acquisition. Option B, initiation. Option C, operation and maintenance. And option D is implementation assessment. Okay. So readiness review will be come into the picture when the application is already ready. Okay. And manage the configuration come into the picture when we're talking about day-to-day -day activity. So during a, a uh, development acquisition is basically the stage where we acquiring or doing a coding. So that time there's no talking about manage the configuration of a system because system is already built. So A removed. B, where we understanding. Forget about manage, we are trying to understand. So B removed. 
C is called operation maintenance and D is implementation assessment. Implementation assessment where we obtain the accreditation. So D removed. So only option is basically left is C. During operation maintenance when application roll out to the production, any kind of a changes need to be do, introduced, it need to go through a change management process. Any kind of a configuration need to be validated, it need to be go through the configuration management process. Any kind of a application review need to be done, we need to review the documentation first. That is why operational readiness review and manage the configuration need to be checked before we application roll out to the operation maintenance. That is a critical part of the C. That's why we're going with the answer C, operation and maintenance. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Yeah, so this question is a bit tricky. Which of the following is the primary priority of agile development model? The keyword here is agile development model. So agile is an iterative where frequent feedbacks, modification, interaction with the customer is happen. Always remember agile, the biggest reason of using agile is using a limited documentation. They don't follow documentation. And this and they basically believe in the feedbacks they have a 12 principles okay so what is their primary priority according to the principle option a early and continuous delivery of valuable softwares which is actually true welcome to changing requirement it is not necessary it is only used in agile we have other methodology like uh, spiral and we have a uh, uh, code lookups where we having a changing requirement so this is not something a biggest reason that we have gone for agile Building secure application is a normal requirement of uh, all the methodology. Review the security in the initial phase. It's a primary requirement of any SDLC process. So the biggest reason of using Agile is uh, uh, transition to the limited documentations and continuous delivery of the valuable software based on the feedbacks, frequent meetings and everything. That's why the answer is A and B somehow cover the A part also. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Okay, so which of the following is a correct statement regarding the different type of roles covered in agile development roles and correct statement option is scrum master product owner development team. That is true. Option B scrum master product developer. I never heard product developer development team is okay. Development team is also called scrum team project manager. No, we have a project manager product owner development but scrum master is missing. And option D is Scrum Master is a product owner is a development specialist. No, we have a development team or we have a product team. So the close option is basically the answer is a Scrum Master we have. Product owner is we have development team. Scrum Master is the one who manages the overall delivery of project. Product owner is the one who review and oversight the project. And development team is the one who build the project. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Which framework is used for implementing a software security program and focus on integrating a security activities into the existing SDLC? Okay, so option A, SAM, Software Assurance Maturity Model. Yeah, it is a framework which is used to introduce security practices with uh, 11, uh, I think 11 practices which cover all the security parameters need to be there in the SDLC. ISO 27001, it's more about ISMS implementation. They don't have a specific 27,001 itself does not talking about specific security activity in the SDLC. 31,000 is more about enterprise risk management and 22,301 is BCMS. So the only option which is basically closed is SAM software assurance maturity model. So they basically have, I think four business functions with 11 or 12 practices, which talk about how to integrate the security in the SDLC. So this is all from my side and uh, do check my previous videos of SDLC. I'm sure that will be very useful for your exam preparation. And do let me know your feedbacks in the comment section and uh, what are the new topics you want me to create on the uh, next video on YouTube. And if you're still not subscribed to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos. Thank you.